And I'm late again. Oh, it's funny how this never works when I want it to work. So I was actually trying to go early so that I'd be ready because I said 8 o'clock. At least it's only two minutes late. So I've been trying to get better at these things as far as live streams go to get more engagement and things like that. So I've been posting a lot more about it. I've been trying to be consistent when it comes to the time. Before I had done 5 o'clock, and it's hit or miss. 5 o'clock supposed to be good. 8 o'clock at night supposed to be good. I don't know. So we'll see. This is the fifth without a map podcast post game show I'm not going to get too deep right now because I want to see how long it takes the word to get out that I have gone live because God knows I promoted it a couple times it's going to be fun I'm actually out on location again last week I was on location from my driveway (laughs) this time I said you know I'm going to actually go out somewhere So I am. I'm in a secret location. I'll share a little story about... So I won't give too much about the spot away. Mostly because it's good. Not a lot of people come down here. So this may be a good place to set up shop as far as doing these. But I used to come down to this place many years ago. Several years ago. With an ex-girlfriend. And we used to come down here. And we'd sit. It's by the water. And we'd have a few drinks. And just listen to some music and chat. And it was a good old time. And obviously once that relationship ended. what? Why would I do that on my own? It's not smart. Not safe. And it would just remind me of bad times. So why am I here now? I eh, figured what the hell. Why not? Why not come down here, see how it is? So, without a map, it's, like I said, a podcast post-game show. I am in charge of the In My Footsteps podcast. The title should be up there. I try to make it easy enough to find. What I do with these, when I do the podcast, it's structured enough that it's like a teacher with a lesson plan, almost where you want to make sure you get a lot of the important details to whatever segment you're doing. And I like these because they can be more free-flowing, if that makes any sense. So this past week, yesterday, my newest podcast episode came out. It was episode 14, which is pretty good. I've been running this podcast since November. And I was doing every other week for 2020... And then I decided to do three weeks on, one week off for 2021 just to see how it goes as far as workload. And it's been all right. You you kind of plan ahead. You, can, you always got to plan ahead. So episode 14 was a bit of uh, like a side tra- Not a sidetrack, but more experimenting with other topics. So the podcast at the beginning... For those that have never heard of it, never watched it, never anything. It was New England travel and history, mostly. With a little side dish of 80s nostalgia. I'm a child of the 80s, so why not share that funny childhood memories, things that I remember when I was a kid. And it's been good. I've gotten a lot of good feedback for those things. I do a lot of good research with This Week in History It takes a while to find good topics to share with people. But what I also learned is you want to kind of experiment, branch out, see what other stuff people might like. Obviously, that doesn't mean I'm going to change the podcast up altogether. But what I've been doing, I started adding more, I guess, not biographical stuff, but it's considered lifestyle. And... I started researching, well, what exactly makes a lifestyle topic? 
And it was funny. It's a lot of stuff that I've been talking about. Travel. The travel stuff is considered lifestyle. So I was like, all right, I'm already kind of doing it. So as we go along, I'm going to add a little bit more as far as lifestyle topics go. So the funny thing. So I got this here. Can you see it? Oh, my God. So it's Race Point Seltzer. Made on Cape Cod. It's CBD. I thought it was fitting that I haven't been down in this area, this little secret nook in, I'd say, five years. And I said, I got to go down there and, you know, no alcohol. I haven't had any alcohol since September. Before that, it was bad. It was just, it became almost like a job. You got to drink all the time. So... I don't want it to explode. That wasn't meant to be all like cool looking and stuff. <laughs> I figured the last thing I want to do is dump this all over myself and then the whole live stream is ruined. These guys are good. Race Point Seltzer. They're on Instagram. I commented on a post of theirs and said I'm going to be having one during my live stream. I don't know if they'll show up or not. But check them out. They've got a website, racepointseltzer.com. So, episode 14 of the podcast was a little bit of a sidetrack. I started off with an interview with a good friend of mine, old friend of mine, Steve Drozell. You remember him from the first live stream where I accidentally put him on the screen. So that was good. But at least it led to something. I called the interview an introduction to photography in the description of the podcast because, you know, people wouldn't get my inside joke. Steve and I call dedication to the craft is the idea of getting the photo that you want regardless, you know, if it's bad weather, if, you know, if you're trying to get a picture of a boat and people are going by and you don't want the people in the picture, you wait and wait and wait. So it's dedication to the craft. And I started thinking, people aren't going to get that. And I want more engagement with the podcast. So having my little inside joke that one person would get be in the title, just... If you if you saw the podcast and it said dedication to the craft interview, what would you think it was? I would think it was crafting. Like making a scrapbook, making, you know... Um, what do you call it, like a stamp collection or some something like that, not photography. So I'm still getting, you know, used to doing this. So the dedication of the craft, the we did the interview from Old Stone Church in West Boylston. Now, I don't know if anyone knows Old Stone Church. So the funny thing is I was doing this last week. There we go. That's the Old Stone Church in West Boylston. Funny little sidetrack. These live streams, when I get done, I put them on IGTV. I put them probably tomorrow on YouTube, Facebook, because it's tough. Fridays at eight seem to be a good time, but if someone can't be here and they want to know what foolish ramblings that I've been doing, you can see it. So, I was watching because I'll put chapters in on YouTube so that people can skip around. These are usually 35 to 40 minutes, so I don't expect everyone to just zone in on it. And I was going through to put a photo up like this of the Old Stone Church, and I realized that this image, me searching through my photos, wasn't coming up on the video. So basically it was just me going like this, but I was scrolling through my photos and it just looked so stupid. But what are you going to do? So we, the interview, we just talk about basics with photography. And everyone who's on here on Instagram, that's what you do here. It's photography. And Steve, he's a professional photographer. He's more of the... He worked for newspapers. He's got that technical knowledge. Like me, I've got a Canon Rebel T7... I know some about it. 
I get more lucky than good. So I wanted him to come on to the podcast and kind of talk about basics, how to take better photos. And as we go along, we're going to do another interview down the road a bit where it'll be more nuts and bolts. It's sort of like he gave you part one of photography and then we'll do part two down the road. Also, as I was saying, it was a little bit of a diversion from normal with this episode of the podcast. So I did photography and then I also did a segment just called Why You Should Be Running because I'm also a personal trainer. And 10 years ago this week, it might even have been today, I got back into running. I was a runner in like middle school and I got out of it because... I don't know, you get into high school and it's like, I'd rather be in the gym lifting. Although when you're 15, 16, it's not the same. But, hold on. For people coming in, this is Race Point Seltzer. It's CBD. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in over six months. The funny thing, you'll notice with these without a map live streams, that I have no rhyme or reason. If you've ever listened to the podcast, they're very laid out. I know A, B, C, D, and I kind of follow that so that you can follow the podcast. This is more of, I call a stream of consciousness where my mind just... So with the CBD, I'm keeping, keeping track of the days that I don't drink. I just think it's one of those, you celebrate little milestones. I was drinking a lot for many months it kind of timed with my grandfather getting sick and then passing away and then that's how I kind of coped with it we're going back to two years ago like March of 2019 anyway so I'm all excited I got my phone out and I'm figuring out using the calendar what you know when I'm going to hit 200 days and 200 days without alcohol is going to actually be April Fool's Day which I said I couldn't have made that up because then I was like, maybe I'll make a joke and I'll just have a picture of like a 30 pack and be like, oh, I'm back on on the wagon. And then April Fool's. Some people won't think that's funny, though. So I'm sharing it here. All right. So running. Fitness, cardio, it's hand in hand. You know, lifting weights, muscle burns, fat. That is a given. That's why a lot of people, if you get into a routine where you go to the gym and you start to exercise a lot to lose weight, you will initially drop a lot of weight. But then you start to plateau. And the plateau comes from gaining muscle, which weighs more. So you start to think that your diet isn't going as well, when in reality, your fitness level is actually rising. But cardio is such an important thing. And I find that it happened with me. I found that when people were telling me to get into running again, I was like, I don't want to do that. My knees, my ankles, my back, they're going to get destroyed. And so there were three people that kind of pushed me into running. My uncle Steve, who's a marathon runner, he would say, this was in 2011, he would say, you know, I started running the Boston Marathon in my 50s. What's your excuse for not running at all? And I'd kind of, I don't want to. And then a really good friend of mine, Deanna, she she ran marathons after having a liver transplant. She's like a superhero. And she would say, I had a liver transplant and I'm running marathons. You know, what's your excuse? And it's like, oh, all right. And then there was a girl that I was interested in at the gym. And I saw her running a lot. And I said, well, if I'm going to get to know her, I kind of got to take an interest in something that she's interested in. And she said to me, you know, you should start running. And I said, oh, man. All right, I guess I will. So I did one mile, 10 minute pace on a treadmill in the same shoes that I wore to work. They were New Balance sneakers. I said, if my knees and my back feel fine after that, I'll keep going. And it did. And it's a slow progression. On the podcast, I get more into what to do to start running. Essentially, it's just go at your pace. 
And that, you know, never ever compare yourself to someone else who's running because you're always going to find someone faster, someone that can run longer. That always happened to me. I finally got to the point where, you know, you have to kind of put the blinders on. But if you do it right, you go and get sneakers and you get measured, measured in the evening too, because your feet swell during the day from you being on them all day. You get measured the sneakers that are right for you. I had the problem that I would always go for the sneakers that looked cool. And the people at the running stores would just be like, do you want shoes that look cool or do you want shoes that work for you? And I've yet to find one that's both, but whatever. I mean, that's fine. But you get measured and then you start with what your body can do. You know your own fitness level. No one, I wouldn't expect anyone that hasn't run before to go do five miles. Only an idiot like me would do that. And it's true. I did that 2008. I think my uncle Steve actually, he broke me down to the point where I actually went to run and I did five miles and I pulled every muscle in both legs and I said, I hate this. I'm not doing this anymore. And it was like two years before I ran again. But it's always just get measured for shoes, go at your own pace, stretch like crazy, dynamic stretches before, static stretches after. What that means is dynamic stretches are more moving. You're moving to loosen the muscles up. Static is when you hold it. If you see people stretch like that and hold it to stretch the triceps muscle after. And then rest when your body needs rest. And you kind of go from there. It's fun. I learned, I had so much fun doing the races, half marathons, marathons, 5Ks. Not to go to try to win, but you go and it's a community. And you get a t-shirt and a medal sometimes. And those are, I have a bag full of medals that I'll end up giving to my nieces and nephews probably. So we did photography. We did running. Then... So this is fun. I've got visual aids for this one. I don't know anyone who's in the chat, anyone that sees this after, like when you grew up, what your form of listening to music was. For me, I'm a child of the 80s. I actually had vinyl albums. And for some people that are younger, you, they're like retro chic now where albums are out again. But my mother bought me a Fisher Price record player when I was, I would think, five years old. The first album that I remember playing on it was Michael Jackson's Thriller. So that dates me right there. I got that for my fifth birthday, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Back when he was, at least up front, he was normal. But we used to take the Fisher Price record player, stick it in the window in the living room at my house, and play Michael Jackson's Thriller and the neighborhood kids would all come around and they'd dance in the front yard. It was like something out of a musical <laughs> except on Cape Cod in the 80s. And for anyone that came into the chat, it's CBD Race Point Seltzer. Go and check them out. They're definitely worth it. That's 30, gra 30 milligrams of CBD in it. I don't want to get it too close because I'm in my car and I got the lights on up here. So if I get too close to the phone, it gets dark. But if you see me drinking that, it's not alcohol. I'm almost 200 days sober. Anyway, so the Fisher Price record player, I don't have a photo of that, unfortunately. Just got a picture in your mind. It was kind of beige and it had um, the arm for the record was orange if that makes sense. If you go to look for them on eBay now, they go for like 80 to to $100. I wish I still had mine. I'd sell it. But after a while, you know, when you're a kid, you listen to the music that your parents play and you kind of have no choice. But eventually you start to hear other music that speaks to you and you gravitate towards that. I don't know how I ended up where I ended up with this music that I started listening to. We're going back to when I was between six and eight years old. So 1980, 
1983 to 1985. <laughs> yes, do the math. And I just remember the music I played and the albums I had. And I don't want to spoil because on the podcast I go into all of the albums. But I'll show you one. So I did. I grabbed this just specifically for this. Does anyone out there remember the band Quiet Riot? You would have to be my age or maybe a little older. I would think a lot older, actually, because I was six years old and I had this album with this dude here. They're heavy metal. I was a little metalhead at six years old. I had this album, Quiet Riot. They did a song, Come On, Feel the Noise. It's still good. That's a good song, even 35 plus years later. The funny thing about this album, I wanted it. I don't know why. I don't know where I ever heard Quiet Riot. But I got this album, and this guy on the front scared the hell out of me so much that I'd play the music, but I'd have the album cover face down so I'd only see the back. I was six years old, and that's what I'm... I don't know why the hell my mother would buy that for me. If I was in a store and said, Mom, can I have Quiet Riot? six-year-old boy on Cape Cod. But, I don't know, maybe she just figured, good, this will teach you. You want to stare at that face all the time. I also had Rat, Motley Crue, Twisted Sister, Van Halen. This reality. That's what I listened to as a child. Oof, I don't know how I found these. I've yet to ask my mother how I got into them because she probably would just say you're crazy that was her problem but yeah quiet riot that album cover used to give me nightmares so this next week i'm not going to have a podcast because it was three weeks on and one week off and this is my one week off coming up i'll still do a live stream next friday same thing i'm not done yet but i'm just i'm explaining how this will go in two weeks, I'm going to do episode 15, and I've actually already got cover art for it. So that's episode 15. And the symbolism behind that flower is it's a tiger lily, and my grandmother, my Nina, she just passed away on Tuesday. And these tiger lilies always remind me of her because she was allergic to them. And when she would take me, usually me and my oldest sister, Kate, oldest, but I mean, I'm, I'm the oldest of the five. She's the next oldest. She'd take us out Sunday driving and shopping and go to friendlies and such. And she would tell us to keep an eye out for tiger lilies because she'd have to roll the windows up. So I'm going to do a segment about her on the podcast for episode 15 because she deserves more than just a little blurb. I mentioned her in the current one, episode 14. I mentioned her in that. So she was 92 years old, and she had spent the last, I would say, 16 months in a nursing home. And think about the timing of that is she got in there and then COVID happened and the family couldn't go in and see her. So it was this horrible, slow decline. So one part of me was happy that she was just at peace because it was just not a fun last year or so. But then, you know, selfishly, you want... She's my last grandparent, so you want her to live forever. But that's not reality. She was married to my grandfather for 73 years. They met when she was 15 and he was 18. And they got married in 1945. And they were together until he died in May of 2019. And I liken... Her decline after he passed away, I liken it to standing and watching the tide go out. So if you stand on the shore of the beach at high tide, when it starts to turn, 
if you just stand there and wait for the tide to go all the way out, it seems like it takes forever. It's a slow process. And then when the tide is out, suddenly it's like, wow, where did the time go? The tide's out. And that's how I feel like it went with my Nina was the tide slowly went out. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, it's it's over now. And that's kind of where it's at. But you cherish the time that you have with those people. I was lucky enough that my father's father, he passed away when my dad was young. But my other three grandparents, I had all three of them until I was 32 years old. I had three grandparents that were alive. And that doesn't happen for everyone. I mean, God, I I know some people that never knew their grandparents because they died either before they were born or when they were really young. So I consider myself lucky. Now I've I'm I've been charged with writing the obituary and I have to condense my Nina's life and legacy into I think it's less than 300 words. So a funny thing, the reason why is I wrote the obituary for my grandfather, for my grandpa when he died in May of 2019. And basically they gave me free reign. My grandpa is my hero, my role model. He's basically who I try to emulate as far as being a human. And so I couldn't sum his life up in that short of a time. And they basically, they let me have carte blanche with how much I wrote about him. And I think God, I hope my my mother sees this. I thought she said that it ended up costing $700 for the obituary. I don't know. If, is that sound accurate that it would cost that much? So this time they're like, we need to keep it short so that it's covered by the funeral insurance. <laughs> so that's going to be episode 15. I'm going to talk more about my Nina and her legacy but not in a way that it's just her I want it to be in a way that anyone that's you know had grandparents that they love or lost loved ones you everyone can relate to that that's one way that everyone's the same is that we all have loved ones that we've lost so that's a way that we can connect I'm also going to talk about the death of Kurt Cobain who was my another influence on me growing up He's seen as kind of the voice of my generation, I guess. I'm a Generation Xer. I grew up on grunge music, torn jeans, flannel shirts, etc. So that's going to be on the next episode. Let's see. So for those that have just come in, A, I was late with the stream because, good Lord, this thing never works on time. But that's fine. Last week I was on location from my driveway. I've been, this is my fifth without a map. It's a podcast post game live stream, basically. So my podcast usually goes live Thursdays anywhere you get podcasts. It's the In My Footsteps podcast. That's episode 14 because I talk about photography and I talk about running. And so these kind of ebb and flow. But I like to be outside somewhere so that when I get done with my soliloquy with everyone, I can take the phone off of its little mount here and show you where I'm at. And I'm actually on location this time. And I'm at this place. I'll kind of show you because it's dark, so you're not going to be able to see much. But it's a spot that people don't usually go to, so I'm, it's giving me hope that I can come here and do these live streams all the time and not get bothered because my big thing is that I do this live stream and either a cop shows up where I'm at and bangs on the glass and then I'm like I can't pause the live stream to talk to the cop so it hasn't happened yet but that's just where my mind goes so it's Friday What? so those of you that are here and watching live if you were to watch a live stream like what days and times 
usually work. I'm trying to do research to see how many eyes I can get on this live. So when you go to do a live stream, it'll say how many of your followers are currently on the app. And so I'm usually at 8 o'clock on Friday, I'm somewhere between 55 and 65 people that are on the app. But I'm trying to figure it out because it's all this, you know, trial and error where I kind of just come on here and <laughs> hope that, you know, people eventually find it. Each one seems to get a little bit longer. Like right now, I'm almost a half an hour in. And hopefully it's been entertaining. Nothing fun has happened around here. No coyotes or anything like that. It's kind of a desolate area. It's nice. It's on the water. There's water right there. But, so let's see. What else? So I was talking about running. That ties in with, hopefully in the next few weeks, I'm going to be taking this course to get a second certification. I'm certified as a personal trainer. I always have to re, re-up that uh, continuing education every two years. So I'm going to get certified as post-rehab training. Essentially, someone gets hurt, they go to physical therapy, and I would be that kind of branch or the, the one to take the baton from the physical therapist. I don't even know what that means as far as what I could do for work compared to working in a gym. I don't know anyone who's got that sort of certification. So I don't know if I could go to like a doctor's office or anything like that. But that's coming up. That's why I'm starting to incorporate a little more fitness into the podcast. Because as I get more into that, I need to kind of speak more about everything that makes makes up me. So it's not totally biographical, but it's more, I've been saying, lifestyle. Because the podcast has been New England history and travel with a little pinch of nostalgia. And now that pinch of nostalgia has gotten to more of like a big handful, and I'm adding lifestyle topics. Like I said, episode 14 had an introduction to photography interview. It had kind of a beginner's guide to start running so that you don't get hurt doing it. And as I go, I'm going to add more of that. I don't mind telling funny stories about myself and stuff. I, I've i grown up, I've got, you know, three sisters and a brother and a huge family. And all we do is trash talk and such. We have this family chat that's going on Facebook Messenger. And it's the other day we had just nonstop stream of embarrassing photos I don't know if I have any of them on here to share with you. This is the part of the show where you won't see me scrolling, but I'm scrolling. Well, there's this. So this isn't embarrassing, but it's... And I can't make it smaller. Well, that's a shame. That's my Nina with me in 1983. My sister Kate is like off to the side. She looks like she's vanished. But we were just sending these photos... Over and over. You have to have a thick skin in my family. We non-stop trash talk. So anyway. So I'm going to start to wrap it up. I appreciate everyone coming in and joining. And then this is going to go up on IGTV right after. I literally save it and send it right over there. Because I want to see how many eyes I get on it. And... The podcast, In My Footsteps podcast, is everywhere you get it. Right now, Apple, iTunes, that's where I get the most downloads. More than half of them come through Apple. So I'm kind of leaning into promoting that. But you can also go to my personal website, ChristopherSetterland.com. I've been trying to shout that out more. It's got the like a player at the top with all the podcasts on it. So you can click on each one. It's got links to all five of my books that are out now. God, I don't even know if I have a link to that on here. Well, I've got this. So this is my sixth book. That's going to be coming out the week of May 24th. 
iconic hotels and motels of Cape Cod. It's going to be in all stores on Amazon. It's released through the History Press, Arcadia Publishing. It's the end of my Cape Cod History Trilogy. I did Historic Restaurants. I did Cape Cod Nights, which was nightlife, nightclubs and bars. And now this is Hotels and Motels. I said the first book was Where You Go to Eat. The second book was Where You Go to Drink and Party. And the third book, this one, is Where You Go to Sleep Off the Effects of That, <laughs> What You Did. But ChristopherSetterland.com was created by my oldest friend, Barry Menard, who's a great graphic designer. And I feel like I need to shout that out more because he's very busy with what he does in graphic design. And if I need something on the site, like I added the link to the podcast, he's right there to do it. So that's why you can go and you can see all that good stuff. As I said, this is Race Point Seltzer, CBD Seltzer. This is grapefruit, which it's not my favorite flavor, but 30 milligrams of CBD. They're local. So you go, they're on Instagram too. You can find them, Race Point Seltzer. But yeah, I'm on YouTube. Same thing. Everything is Christopher Sederland. My name, it's literally on my page if you follow me because it's hard enough to spell. It's Swedish. I did the show Chronicle two years ago on Channel 5. I'll try to sum this up quick as far as my last name goes. I was working at a retirement home. Word got out that I was going to be on the show for my last book, Cape Cod Nights, in 2019. And the general manager was excited she print she made this flyer with my stupid face and then the cover of the book and it said tune in to see christopher setterland on chronicle at 7 30 she spelled my last name wrong twice in my last name two of the letters were wrong and i said oh man and i was running around the property of the retirement home trying to use a sharpie to change it because it's but i'm used to it now so yeah, check YouTube. I do 4K New England videos because my Canon Rebel T7 shoots 4K video. So they look really good. So this one is going to be the one that's coming up, I would say, Monday. I pushed everything back when my Nina passed away on Tuesday. So this one's kind of in the chamber. Fort Revere Park in Hull is awesome. You go inside these. It's an old fort. It was decommissioned in World War II. You go inside, it's all graffitied up, but it kind of adds to the the vibe of it. And it faces Boston Harbor. There's Boston Lighthouse, and behind it is Graves Lighthouse. And that's cool for photos. But that's going to be coming up. And you can go on there. You can subscribe. I've got tons of videos over there. I put out so much content that it's... Like, I don't even give it time to breathe. Like, this... Right here, the live stream will be up everywhere. This morning I shared, oh, the video for the Fisher-Price phonograph that I talked about earlier. I did an actual video for the audio from the podcast where I have all the record covers. It's just nonstop. I'm trying to constantly pump out content to get more eyes on it. That's where this came from. But I hope you've enjoyed you know, this kind of live stream and just let me know like what times and days, like when you think about doing a live stream, like checking something out, like when, when is the best? Like I'm doing all this research, so I'm trying to keep it Fridays at eight, but if I find another day and time is better, who knows? So what I'm going to do is I'll show you proof that I'm on location. So what I'm going to do is flip this and we'll go outside. I don't know if you can see the moon right there. I'm going to shut my car door so that it's not beeping. So basically, yeah, you can't really see. But we're right on Bass River. So I don't know, I'm turning towards, yeah, you can't see the house. Yeah, this is exciting. If you come and join it now and you see nothing. But yeah, the moon is right there. The river is right over that way. 
Ah, well, that was... <laughs> that was like a failure. See, we'll go back to my car. So I just wanted to say... Thank you all so much for joining. And this will be up on IGTV right after. And then Facebook and YouTube after. But thank you so much. And hopefully you enjoyed it. And next Friday I'll do it again. The sixth episode of this Without a Map live stream. But until then, I'll see you again sooner than later. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, everyone.